all welcome to force galaxy hope you are doing good so today in this video i'm going to share one interview okay so this is a quick interview about a short interview about 15 to 16 minutes and in this interview you will get to know how the interview will going to ask the answer based on your projects and the experience and the uh, introduction you have shared so you get an idea from this and also please do not focus on the answer so it might be possible the candidate is giving uh, is on the correct path or not so if you have any question a query or any uh, and want to know answer of any query questions do let me know in the comment section so i am here to revert you okay so now let's start with the video hi hello uh, hi Kanika. yeah hi okay so how are you I'm good. Thank you for asking. Okay, so now let's start. Okay, so please introduce yourself. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself. Uh, uh, my responsibility includes uh, creating and developing like web components or a components, FX classes and triggers, managing API integrations, and implementing sharing and security settings. That's all about it. Okay, nice. Okay, so in integration, what project do you have performed? I have worked on REST API integration. Okay, like transferring the data or getting the data in Salesforce? Getting the data in Salesforce. From? From third party APIs. Okay, so which methods you have used here? Actually, uh, we um, use uh, get. Uh, method for uh, and then set endpoint uh, method like we basically stored the username and password in custom settings and then using access token we got the data and then we serialize the json and put the data into the frames so why did you uh, uh, store these in the passwords and the credentials in the custom settings why don't you go with the name and credentials Actually, I did it to like get the dummy data okay. for that. Yeah. Okay. So, how we used to update our data in Salesforce in integration using the APIs? Uh, like we get the JSON and then we deserialize the JSON and then we update the fields. Uh, which method we prefer here? REST method. Which REST method we used? Uh, like a uh, set method we use get and then set endpoint for the URL and username and password. Okay. So, uh, do you know any advantages or uh, any benefits of name and credentials? Yeah, name credentials are basically more secure and like the username and password is encrypted in name credentials. So we store like uh, the URL and uh, username and password in one place when we use name credentials. Okay, so is there any need to add the remote site setting also when uh, when we are working with name and credentials? No. No? Why? Yeah. Uh, because a Salesforce uh, automatically performs the authorization uh, when the endpoint is a name credential. Okay. So, uh, you also aware about this O2.0? Uh, yes, I am. Earlier, what happens we uh, when we perform this O2.0, so refresh token and access to token, we have to work on both because it expired. Okay, so uh, use, when we came to the name and credential, so any advantages you see in this O2.0? I'm like not sure. I think it automatically refreshes the token. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. In the LWC, what you have done till now? Um, basically, like worked on the customization. Customization of the so the project oh. is already built. You have yeah. worked on the yeah. modifications and the additional work. Yeah, additional. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, anything what you have built in this? Or anything uh, which you find is out of box? Uh, like uh, when I worked on like Aura components, I basically like in, in Lightning, I haven't like done anything as out of box. But in Aura when I was working, 
So we basically uh, like modified the Kanban view. So like uh, and then worked the on actual that. Kanban view, uh, the standard one. So you yeah. have created it custom. You have created. Yeah, we customized it. Okay, nice. What customization you have done there? Uh, basically to calculate the total amount of opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, which are there at each level like if it is closed one then the total amount and total number of opportunities should also be displayed in the Kanban. Nice. Oh, so in LWC uh, what advantages you have seen uh, over this Aura components? It's like easy to learn and it uses uh, like more of the uh, web standards and less framework. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, and it's easy, like we use HTML5 and JavaScript. Uh, and so like in Aura, it's more of the framework and in LWC is less framework and like more standards. So like it's easy to work in LWC. Okay. Uh, have you also heard this point that uh, the processing speed is more faster in LWC as compared to the Aura? difference so can you elaborate this to me what does this actually mean like it's uh faster like uh the data from the server like uh takes like less amount of time when working in lwc okay. so like it's faster in lwc mm -hmm. So if let's suppose there is a b and c a is the parent okay and b and c are the childs Mm -hmm. Okay, now I want to pass the data from B to C. How okay. are you going to achieve this? So, like A is the parent, right? Yes, A is the parent on top, and B and C are the child components. Okay, so A is related to B and C, but B and C are not related to each other. So, we can like pass, we can create a custom event in B, and then we can pass the data, we can dispatch that event. And we can pass the data from child to parent that is from B to A. And then uh, from A to C, we can make use of the at the rate API decorator to pass the data from parent to child that is A to C. So we can call LWC component from one to another LWC component, right? So can we call LWC component from the Aura? Yes, from Aura we can call it. LWC. Okay, any difference you find when calling from the LWC itself and when calling from Aura? I like don't recall it. Okay, okay, you have not called it. Okay, no problem. Okay, so can we call a wire function inside any uh, JS function? Uh, like suppose in my JS controller, I have a function there. And inside this, I am using a wire. Can we do this? No, I think. No, I haven't like tried it. I think we cannot. Okay. But I'm not sure actually. Okay, what is this keyword in a uh, component we use? In JS, we is, use this keyword. So, uh, yeah. Basically, to like uh, initialize, you know, like for initialization, I'm not sure. Uh, this component, uh, this keyword you, uh, I think, always yeah. used in your component. Use it. But unable to elaborate. Okay. Uh, have you aware about the life cycle hooks also in LWC? Yeah. Okay. Tell so me. basically, uh, it's constructor, it's okay. call, and then we have connected callback, and then the render is called, and then rendered callback. And then uh, disconnected callback, and then we have error callback. Okay. So, is our render callback used to call multiple times? Uh, have you noticed this anytime? No. Mm -hmm. Like, whenever any property changes, so like every time rendered callback will be called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How uh, okay? How we can avoid this if if it is calling multiple times, but I don't want it to be only one to one time. It should be called. So any idea? No. No. Like suppose if you face this type of issue, so what will you going to try? 
what you usually do in triggers if you want to avoid the recursion uh we basically use a static variable static variable okay and uh, static variable will work fine for the 200 records and if i have more than 200 records then uh, we use boolean variable i think yeah boolean static, static boolean. yeah i'm not sure actually okay so did not face this recursion also okay okay you told me the life cycle so now let's suppose in my component i have wire function there okay connected callback is there and rendered callback is there okay so uh, as per your uh, what do you think if when i go to uh, refresh the dom or dom is uploaded mm -hmm. when so which will going to call first uh, basically first connected callback will be called and then buyer will be called and it will like get the default object with no data and then uh, we will have uh, no actually first connect constructor will be called and then the wire it will get the default object created and then we will have connected callback and after that a wire will again be called and it will uh, get the data this time and then the connected callback will be Okay. So can you explain any project on which uh, you have uh, created the components or on anything you have done in LWC? Uh, basically, uh, in LWC, I have like worked on the customization. Uh, customization like? Like uh, to... Uh, to like add uh, the fields in the component and then in the uh, same to get the data from Apex controller in the JavaScript and then display the data in the fields. So this is basically a uh, work done. And uh, to, um, yeah, like basically these type of customizations are worked on. Okay. You also worked on the triggers and the asynchronous apex? Yeah, I have worked on triggers and asynchronous. Okay, why do we use batch class? Mm -hmm. um, batch is uh, basically used when we want to like, process like thousands and millions of records. Is there any limit? 50 million records, the limit is. And if I want to process more than 50 million then? I'm not sure about this. Any idea, any guess? I think it um, gives the error, but like I'm not sure. Yeah, it will give the error. So mm -hmm. anything you can do to avoid this? Um, okay. I'm not sure. Okay. Can we call batch from another batch? Yes, we can. Okay. In which method? Uh, from future method, we can call. Uh, I'm asking, uh, one batch is already uh, there. Sorry. So, yeah, finish now method. Finish method. Okay. So, why in finish method only? Uh, because it basically uh, used for post-processing logic. Like, if you have executed... In execute method, we perform the logic and in the finish, we like perform any actions like calling any batch or so from finish. And if, if, if my requirement is I want to call another batch in the execute method before processing, then can we do this? No, I think. Okay. Have you worked on the flows also? No, I haven't worked. Okay, in admin, uh, what projects you have done? Um, admin, I have basically worked on the like security, record level security. What is record level security? 
like a way to prevent users from having access of uh, records. So for that, we use record level secure security. We have like OWD organization by defaults, which is the baseline level of access for all the records. And then we have role hierarchy and then sharing rules and then manual sharing. Okay. Let's suppose I have two users and in this one user is able to create the records of any object. Okay. And another is user is not able to create. So what are the possible ways for this? So it could be that the user won't be having access at the profile level to the object. Okay. And then the OWD, the second reason would be the OWD can be private. Okay. Yeah, I think these. Will OWD matters here if he is not able to create the records? Uh, it will matter if you have uh, like access at the profile level. Okay. Yeah, but if you not have any access at the profile level, then it won't matter. Okay, in the batch class, if I want to know the number of records, how many records are processed, so how we can uh, get this number? We can uh, use database dot stateful, and then we can get the number. Okay, in the future method, what type of parameters we pass? We pass a uh, primitive data types, uh, array of primitive data types, and list of collections of why uh because uh, if we pass non primitive data types like objects uh, the object can change from the time it is passed and when it is actually called okay the future method is actually executed okay so hope you guys enjoyed this video and find this useful and if you have any queries do let me know and we will meet you soon in the next video